You know who it is, Hollow the Dinner and All, Mikey T the movie star. You want battle me, see me on the roof. Luck style, you heard? So yo, the last time we spoke, or the last time we were together, I should say, was right before your battle with Joe Budden. Um, why do you think Eminem never put together another event like that? Well, it was a misfortunate situation where um, there was a lot of refunds on the pay-per-view. I think the stream lagged or something happened. They didn't anticipate, you know, how heavy it would be. And, and they took, um, I think, like $600,000 worth of um, pay-per-views got refunded back to customers. And I knew this information because I obviously had other business, you know, that I was doing with them besides getting my money. So that was one thing. And then, you know, I was a, a big reason because it looks like, you know, you can't control the artist. We can't control the content. Like, you can't have the dude dissing the people throwing it. You know what I'm saying? So it was a couple reasons. What did you make of Joe Budden setting down the mic? Had that ever happened to you before in a battle? Nah, he's not a battle rapper. That's why I wasn't too shocked. But, nah, that's never – that's never happened, period. In the street battle, off camera, I've never had. You know, one of the funniest shits, though, free my nigga Jerz Black, uh, he and the Fit Dads. Uh, when I was on 106 at Park, bro, this nigga was there. It's all battle rappers, like 150 people in line. And everybody's battling. This nigga would come in, kick a regular verse, banana clip, Brooklyn Branch style. You know how we get it in. Yo, I don't battle, son. Don't spit no verse back at me. Jerns Black mixtape. Anybody copy? Five dollars. Holla at me. I'm like, yo, this nigga psycho. How you just gonna spit your mixtape verse and try to sell it to other rappers? So that's like some of the funniest shit I've seen in fucking in the battle, but I've never seen the nigga just put the mic down and not rap. I've seen a bunch of funny shit. I can name hella funny stories. From, from the penitentiary to the street. I done battled the pen, like all that, you feel me? So I got hella screwed. So, Hollow, how were you actually chosen for that position to actually battle Joe Budden? Man, this is another amazing question. So, boom, I'm with Alchemist. My bad. So I'm with Alchemist. I dropped him off at Shady Records. And um, he called me back like, yo, they want to meet with you. And I'm like. I'm like, damn, my music ain't even been blazing lately. I ain't even been on my shit. I know it can't be the music. So I'm like, fuck it. I double back. And he's like, yo, um, Mike from Shady's like, yo, we got this uh, Total Slaughter thing we're doing. Mind you, this before I battle loaded Lux. And so he's like, Lux and move for the team captains. I'm like, my G, I'm about to battle Lux in about a month or so. He's like, yeah, but this is big. This is Fuse TV. This is I, I, I. No, no, no disrespect, Chris Brown, no deuces. You feel me? I'm, I'm all for this. So I, I left. Like, I'm cool. I don't want no interest. So, boom, um, the show starts going on. They filming. I pull up there just to go holler at Math and Disaster. Ironically, they both was calling me Math and Disaster, and I went to go holler at both of them. And then me and Joe Buttons get into it. And he's like, oh, mind you, when I seen them at Shady, when I went to, for the meeting, I said, yo, where's Joe Buttons? Where's Royce at? I could book to battle against my peers anytime. Like, I don't need y'all to, like, you know what I'm saying, to book a battle. So, you know, they felt disrespect. They threw me out. Not threw me out, but, like, get out of here. So I see Joe Buttons at the show, and I guess Mike told him, like, I was saying that. He's like, yo, Mike telling me you can see me or Royce or something. I'm like, what? and this? So we get to argue, and they take the picture. Boom. That's when the internet talk about it. And Joe hit me like, yo, there's people really thinking you could beat me. Let's set this up. So me and Joe set this shit up. They get wind of it. Now they like, yo, we got a fucking battle rap television show. Y'all ain't finna battle nowhere else. They tell Joe it's a dub. Now I'm like, cool, just give me the same bread I was already getting. They don't want to give me the same bread. About a week or two of negotiation and st stalemates, I'm just like, and boom, I just give in to do it. And I write that verse, you know what I'm saying? That first round I spit. I said, I'm going to just give him this then. You feel me? So that was my decision at that point. Like, all right, I'm going to take this short and, and put them on blast for acting shady about a couple of fucking bucks when I know they got millions of dollars in their budget. You know what I mean? So that's how me and Joe happened. Man, you said to Joe Budden, the last time you was even relevant – for some rapping shit is when Jay-Z followed you on accident and then unfollowed you right after it. 
Can we dig into that a little bit, man? Because you actually only follow one person on Instagram. So in your mind, how did that happen? Yeah, that's my clothing brand I follow, lomclothing.com. You know what I'm saying? Support loyalty over money is what we stand by. But, you know, uh, like three, four years ago when Jay was doing the Magna Grill Carter, when he was doing that album, he went on Twitter and was hollering at mad people, hollering at Ab Soul. You know what I'm saying? I remember he was hollering at mad people and he – just hopped on the Twitter and he must have been on Joe's page because Joe said something about him and he followed him by accident. So mad people had seen it and he unfollowed his shit. But Joe and Jay always had this thing since fucking, you know, them taking them shots and Jay took his beat. Like they always had their thing. So that's why I thought it was funny to poke at Joe about Jay because I always know like, you know, Jay's the OG and niggas look up to Jay. You know? So, um, Hollow, let me ask you, what do you make of Eminem jumping back into battle rap? Is there any chance of that happening? Like I said, I know hella people that work with Shady. I have been around Shady Records for years before Total Slaughter. I was just around because of Alchemist. That's Eminem's DJ. I done been there with Eminem performing with Jay-Z and David Letterman. I met Eminem the day he dropped Recovery, and we was at the Hammerstein Ballroom, and it's just me up there with uh, Royce and them in the, in the green room. Like, nobody met M. It's Bumpy, it's Ron Fest, there's hella other celebrities in the building. That nigga performed and did. You know, he's like, I'm kind of the same way, so I respect it. Some people are just boners. They don't really want to chill. And, you know, they don't like club scenes. And that seems just, that's how he is. I'm not going to say I know, bro, but I'm just going to say I don't never think he would battle because he's more of a, like, to himself type of person. He's not like, I'm going to come out here and battle and get the whole world hype and hype up the world. Let's get... He's like, nah, I know what I do. This music shit, nobody can fuck, me, fuck with me with this. And that's what I'm cool with. I don't... I can't say what that band would do, but I highly doubt if he would ever battle. Unless, like, how Roy's saying it was their own shit and he wanted to come out and battle maybe Jay-Z or Nas or somebody he feel like, you know, is in his pocket or his name. That's how I think the shit should stay. Just how they did Vado and Saigon, like, that's how it should stay. Like, if Cassidy, like, Cassidy is a little different because he get mixy, but if Banks want to come out, like, let him battle J.R. Ryder. You feel me? Like, it should be shit like that. Because it's more leveled out. 